This is a part looking at the geometrical significance of uh, multiplying a complex number by another complex number. Now you'll note that we said in the last section that uh, the effect was first of all on the modulus is the modulus has just multiplied each other. So if we had one here that was um, R1, that was the modulus, and we had another one R2, then the length of them combined would just be R1 times R2, whatever that happens to be. That's how long or how far out from the origin the resultant complex number would be. What about the argument though? Well you recall that the rule was that we added the arguments. So if the argument of complex number 1 was theta 1 here, and placed it here, and the argument of R2 is theta 2, well we end up adding theta 1 and adding theta 2 to that. So we've got a rotating, rotating effect to the right uh, of the two arguments being added together. So wherever it happened to be, it is shifted around whatever the two, number, two uh, arguments added together. Now while I've drawn this almost at right angles, it could be any angle at all. So it's whatever theta 1 plus theta 2 equals, that's how far um, the thing will be rotated around, rotated around from here, or the original one will just be rotate, rotated around whatever the argument of the second complex number is. So it's just interesting to note that that's the effect that you have, and you may need to use that in some of the problems uh, that we have. Now we move on to the division of complex numbers. It's really just the opposite of multiplication. So if you've got two complex numbers here in polar form, Z1 equals R1 cis theta1, and similarly for Z2, since we already saw that when you multiply them, we multiply the arguments and add, uh, sorry, multiply the, uh, the modulus of each, and we add the arguments of each. Here, when we're dividing complex numbers, we divide the moduli of each, and we subtract the arguments, the opposite to multiplication. So that fits pretty well with what we would expect to be the case, or the pattern there, with division being connected to um, subtraction and multiplication being connected to addition. So that makes it pretty easy to remember those two rules, and we use those a lot. The last one we're going to consider is de Moivre's theorem. I wish he had a better name because I have trouble saying it. And in that theorem, it's dealing with a power. What if we have um, r to uh, a power? So z, z to the power of n. This is where this theorem comes in. And it's just simply this. z to the power of n is equal to the modulus to the power of n and the argument multiplied by n. That's it. So whatever happens to be. So if we had something to the power of 2, then this would be r to the power of 2 and 2 theta. If it, was, if it was to the power of minus 3, we'd have minus 3 here and minus 3 theta. And that's all of the theory that you need really to go through uh, chapter or exercise 4D. Now on the, sh the uh, worksheet there, I've put this as well because you need these. You'll be working out uh, what the argument is when we're converting from the Cartesian form into the polar form. So you'll need this, this general chart. Most of the angles are found within this. I think all of them were. I don't, uh, I don't recall any angles being outside these ones here. All the arguments were, were some sort of multiple of these. Also, you're going to need the symmetry properties here that we considered. Uh, I think this is from Chapter 3. And uh, in particular, these sorts of things here, where cos of theta equals cos of minus theta, and sine of minus theta equals minus sine theta, you will find those useful in particular. However, these were also used uh, as well. I uh, don't think we used these ones at the top there. So you need to keep that handy. Very good thing to take in an exam with you in your, um, in your book that you're allowed to uh, take in. This sort of thing, because frankly I can't remember these. Uh, I will come to a problem and say, oh yeah, that's right, that's the symmetry laws. Um, but committing all of these to memory uh, without sitting there and having to draw them up and work them out, um, I find that difficult, so I like to have these nearby. And by the way, in an exam, while I can sit there and work them out, you don't have time to do that. You need to quickly put your hand on, the, on that information and then apply it to the, uh, to the problem and work through it. So we need to learn to work efficiently so that you can be efficient in your exam. And uh, the final part from Chapter 3, we do use these uh, compound angle formulas too, you know, adding uh, or subtracting angles. Uh, that will also be used. Didn't use the tan ones. 
Right, so look, that's uh, that's about it for the theory. Uh, I'll spend a little another second uh, video now just on how well, I went through some of these problems and some of the issues that I came across.